Hello again, YouTube. Welcome back to another Adventures in Coding video. So I'm back again. I've got a new coding project I thought we could go through. This one's actually going to be a series, which is something new for us, but I thought would be kind of fun. Uh, in terms of an update on the channel, I'm hoping to have this series go and have some more videos more often, which I know some people will be excited about. And I've still been working away on the game. I've just done a minor, minor update on the game. Uh, with some technical upgrades. I've got another one I want to get done, and then I'm going to be at work on chapter three of the game, which is very exciting. I'm over the hump. I'm over the halfway point, which gets me very excited. So let's get into this as soon as possible. What are we working on today? We're going to be looking at particle systems. I thought this would be a really fun video series and useful for people to have. Like usual, I'll post all of this on GitHub. So you'll be able to use this code wherever, however you'd like. Um, but particle systems are something that are super, super useful in 3D rendering and in games. They're used for so many different things. And I think making a good system that's portable, that can be used and that people understand would be of really good value. Plus there's some really neat problems to try and solve. So just as an overview, if you don't know what a particle system is, or if you don't know what particles are in games, um, the idea is to just have a ton of little particles, a ton of uh, individual items that you draw on screen. Uh, they could be textures, they could be sprite sheets, they could even just be shapes that are just a solid color. Uh, in games, they're usually used to add a lot of kind of oomph to the game. They could be fireball effects, they could be explosions, they could be gunfire muzzle flashes, they could be blood spurts, maybe you swing a sword and it hits a wall and you have sparks come out. Um, they're used for all sorts of different uh, effects within games and they kind of bring things to life, electricity, all sorts of different effects. So in terms of making a particle system, what we want to make is something that can be fit into any OpenGL system. So this it shouldn't be something that you have to kind of bring in a ton of code to do. Should be able to slot this in nice and easy. It should be very good performance because as you can kind of see maybe in these pictures, uh, people like to have lots of particles. Particles are used a lot in modern games. So we wanna be able to draw and render thousands of them on screen without negatively impacting performance too much. And the last thing we want is we want it to be customizable. Um, part of the cool thing with particles is you don't know how people are going to use them, right? So you want to be able to make a system that can be used for a ton of different purposes. So that's kind of what the goal is today. Uh, today, in the first couple of videos, we're going to be focusing really on rendering particles. So as we kind of go on, if you know anything about particle systems, if you've used Unity or Unreal or any other game object, you'll know there's kind of a lot that goes into particles. There's the emitters, there's the different logic of uh, kind of setting things up and how you want your particles to look and all the tweaking with the look and feel. Today, our goal is to just try and get a rendering pipeline going where we can have some particles on screen, a good baseline that we can grow out of. So once again, we're back in a learn OpenGL uh, project here, like usual, like I say with all of these, I'm just doing this because it's a pain in the butt to set up all of the includes. Uh, and so by using this, I already have all the includes set up. I'll put all this together and all of the code I'll put on GitHub. You won't actually need this project to make it work as long as you have uh, your includes with OpenGL stuff. So GLAD and GLF W3. So with all that being said, I think it's time we start writing some code. I'm trying, trying to jump in faster than usual. So this is just a random texture example I have here. You can see if I hit play, this is one of the first ones. I think it just has two textures drawing on top of each other. So we're gonna take this as kind of our jumping off point and we're gonna modify this. Uh, I like the fact that we have a quad already we're drawing. We're gonna take that and we're gonna make it so we can draw a ton of quads uh, kind of randomly. So it's it's really not gonna be too far off of what you've probably done before if you've never done anything with particles uh, to start with. But 
it's just going to be kind of our jumping off point and it will get more and more specific and optimized as we go along. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, you're going to see as we work on this over the different videos, this is going to kind of grow over time. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make an initialize function. Right now, this example, Learn OpenGL, they try and make everything as simple as possible, which is obviously a great thing to strive for. Uh, but because we're going to make something that's kind of larger and we want to be able to maintain, uh, I'm going to try and break this into some functions. So instead of having all of this in here, this is all of our setup code. I'm going to take all that. Um, I'm not sure about that stuff, but we'll grab this for now. And we'll put it in our initialize here as well. So these are our vertex buffer, our vertex array and our indices, we're gonna take those and put them up here. Uh, you'll notice my screen looks a little bit different from last time. I finally re-upped on vAssist, so now I've got some recommendations that doesn't like null, we should use null pointers. Just put those in. Okay, what else should, can we update here? So these textures, for the time being, we're not gonna use any textures. We will very shortly uh, in a video or two, but for right now, we are just gonna start with some quads. So I'm gonna pull those out, okay. Um, we also have our shader here. So this is kind of similar to, uh, I can't remember if it was our last video or the video before, where instead of having the shader created and used in the same spot, we're gonna have to pull it out. Um, I'll remind you again, my code is still the same from the last video. I had to add this in. I had to add a uh, implicit, a parameterless constructor for the shader to allow to be able to create a variable like that. But by doing that, now we'll be able to reuse the shader throughout. Okay, well, let's see how we're doing. our window, our shaders for the time being, we're gonna stick with these. We are gonna make some new ones from scratch, but for the time being, that looks good. Okay, we can leave all of that. All right, that looks pretty good for the time being. Our window here, we also need to pull out. These textures we're not going to use. Get rid of those. And that looks like that's the end of our errors. Okay, so let's verify if we run this. Always good as much as possible to see if things are working properly. Okay, so it doesn't like the shader. And I think I need to change that constructor usage. I'm going to say our shader is equal to. Let's see if that resolves our issue. Nope, still doesn't like it. Hmm. So it's when we go to use it, it doesn't like it. Our shader. Let's set a breakpoint and see what happens. So immediately it doesn't like it. Oh, <laughs> don't be silly me. I didn't actually call the initialize, <laughs> so that'll be a problem. All right, so we're gonna return false in here. If our window has issues, we'll return false here. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's been a little bit since I've done one of these. Okay, so in here we'll say if initialize is 
false. And we'll return this one. Beautiful. So we still have our quad drawing on the screen, but of course, because I pulled out that texture code, we don't have anything inside of it. So this is good. Uh, we're making some progress here. Some more things we should do. We are gonna have to make our own shader. We're gonna update, I'm gonna update some of the vertice data. Right now we have colors and texture coordinates. Uh, I think we can pull those out. We're not gonna need those. I also wanna update a little bit right now, all of the rendering and all of the updating is kind of in this loop. It would be nice to add a new loop as well. It'd be nice to add a cleanup function. So let's do that. Let's add a cleanup first. This is probably a good time. This is a good segue for this, but um, with my other projects I posted on GitHub, I've tried to, uh, some of you, some viewers have posted really good feedback and even some bugs or some optimizations or mistakes I've made in the code. So I try to keep the GitHub projects up to date. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to act like I'm committing every single day with new pushes or anything, but uh, just if you go to use the project and you notice, hey, this looks a little bit different than what's in the video, it's because I'm trying to keep them up to date. If new things are found, if there's issues, I'll try and change them. So it's kind of the nice thing with YouTube is we can record these videos being made, but the downside is if problems come up and I fix those problems, uh, it doesn't really update in the video, right? So I'm gonna grab this, put it in render, Instead in here we'll call render. And the other thing I'm gonna add is a update function. I don't know that we're gonna be doing a ton with this, maybe a little bit, but uh, really this is, if you've done any kind of game programming or simulation programming, you know it's pretty common to have functions to get the input update your game logic and render the results on screen. And so that's kind of what the plan is here. Okay. All right. So with all of that looking good, let's start working on our shaders and the data we're sending. So first off, like I said, I'm going to pull the rest of the data that isn't positions out of here. And I'm also going to change all of these positions to be one. The reason why I'm doing that is it just makes the scaling a little bit easier. This is one of those things somebody else might be more comfortable with 0.5. It might just be a personal preference. I like one because when you apply the scale, you know uh, it's being multiplied exactly by that. Okay, so that's looking good. Of course, because we've pulled those out, we're now gonna have to update the VAO code. So we bind our vertex buffer object here. And then when we do the attribute pointers, we're now just three items float. We'll listen to what VAssist has to say here, and we'll make this oops, a null pointer. And that'll be it. We can get rid of all of these, right? Because this is to say there's a color attribute and there's a texture coordinate attribute. Not doing any of those. So we pull them out. And I'll pull that out too. Okay. So that looks good. Now we need to do some work on these shaders. So these shaders are pretty stripped down as they are. Pretty basic. I don't even know if... Yeah, those aren't even the right shaders being used because they have no sampler. That's okay. We can use these as our basis. Uh, once again, if you remember from the last video, uh, I think at some point I set my GitHub to read only on this project. And so I can't make the shaders in the same file or update them, which is disappointing and a pain in the butt. But I'm just going to go over on the side here and I'll grab those shaders and I'll update it. Okay, so this 
<clears throat> okay, so I have this folder video one and I have those two shaders. All right, so we need to do some work in here. First thing, we're gonna get rid of this color. We don't have color or texture anymore, so we're gonna remove that. Um, we also don't need to pass a color along anymore because we're not doing any color. Okay, so that looks good. Now in the fragment shader, we don't have a color. So we can do whatever we want here. I have no idea what that color is going to be, but it'll be something, right? Okay. So now back in our project, what we need to do is we need to update those paths, right? So in order to try and reduce the possibility for mistakes, like that. switch these slashes so they're not escape keys okay and I think this one's called all right now if I've done this successfully we should have a different color quad nice so it's working the reason why if you're wondering why is it taking up the whole screen now it's because I went from 0.5 to one, right? Okay, so this is good progress we're making. We're burning through this. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna update these shaders to take in some matrices. So this is pretty basic uh, shader coding. We're gonna have a view and a projection matrix, and eventually we're gonna add a uh, world matrix or world transformation for an individual particle. So for right now, let's add those in. And then that way, hopefully, we can adjust it. We can back the camera up so it's not the whole screen isn't just that particle. Okay. So we just multiply those. Nice and easy. And of course, because we've added these, to our project here. We need to make sure in our C++ code, we actually set those and we create those. So up above, I'm going to create two mat fours. We need to include some GLM code. <clears throat> We can do GLM slash. I always get this wrong. I always want to do common.hpp. And I'm also going to use using namespace GLM. Okay. So these are these two matrices. We can just call them M and P probably. So this is when we think about this particle system integrating with an already existing rendering pipeline, these are probably gonna exist. There's a pretty good chance if you have a rendering pipeline, you have a camera, right? So for the time being, this project is kind of up in the air, everything's happening at once. Uh, over time, as we work on this, we're gonna try and separate this out. So this main function should become thinner and thinner, less going on in here. And we're actually going to make some particle classes and that's going to be where most of the stuff takes place okay so to go along with this we need to set these find where i do that so oh, i might have to do another glm include so our look at, we have where our camera is, what it's looking at, and which direction is up. So let's just back it up on the z-axis. So hopefully we're not completely eclipsed by that. We can just look 
at the origin at zero, 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 and we'll set one on the Y to be up. We need to include some things to get this. Okay, that got rid of that for us, which is good. And the other thing is our projection. So I always say the view is kind of like the camera in the scene where you're placing the camera, and then the projection is kind of like what lens you have on the camera. So we need our FOVY, our aspect ratio, our near and far. So for the FOV, I'm gonna do 80 radians, or sorry, <laughs> the exact opposite, 80 degrees converted to radians. Uh, this is one of those things, obviously, people kind of like to play around with. And then we have this screen width and screen height that came with this project. I'm gonna use those for the aspect ratio. So your aspect ratio is always your width of your screen, your image divided by the height. So 16 by nine, like 1920 divided by 1080 gives you 16, nine. And then the near and far, once again, these are kind of up to you. You can set however you like. I think in my game, I use these values. So I'll go with that. Okay, that's looking good. Now, when we go to do our rendering, we got to set some of these. So we can get rid of that. We can get rid of these guys. Uh, pull all that out. Okay, so we use that shader. This is good. Now let's set some values in it. So with our shader, we have access to this ID, which we're gonna use. So this is where the, the class that comes with Learn GL or Learn OpenGL, it might evolve over time, but it's got some functionality built in. You can set ints, set bool, set floats. Um, so we're going to do something very similar. I should really just be adding to this class. I just feel a little uncomfortable because it's a common class, but we're going to be doing the same thing. If we had all of the possible setters that we would like, we would just use those. But so I'm going to do, we have to get the location of our uniform. So we'll get uniform okay we give it that id and then we're going to give it the name of our mat for in there right so this is going to get us this mat for now we want to set with it we could really store this if we wanted to but gl uniform matrix Four F V. Okay, and we're gonna set one item GL false for transpose, and I'm going to give it the matrix. Sometimes I like to do the uh, data function. I think I did that in the last video. Sometimes we'll do that. I'm not very consistent. Okay. That looks good. Let's see what happens when we run this. Okay, so now it's centered again. Nice. Okay, so that's coming along pretty well. <laughs> Obviously, we haven't exactly reinvented the wheel, have we? We've made some camera matrices, which are pretty common. What we're gonna do now to make it a bit more interesting is we're gonna add our M matrix for the individual model, and then we're gonna create a particle class to start to put some of the logic around particles in. So let's start with that M matrix. This one's not gonna really last for long because eventually we're gonna pull this out anyway, but 
We're going to bring it into the particle class relatively soon, but translate. Do we have a translate? Yeah, I think so. So let's just try moving it up a little bit in the Y. Now that we've got that, sorry, I seem to be bad about scrolling past things today. Do that. And then that. And we'll multiply by that. And we'll multiply. Okay, so we'll give that a run. Nice, you can see it's moved up a little. Um, if you're paying close attention while we do this, you'd probably notice um, we could combine these matrices, right? We could make all three of these just one. Um, we don't wanna do that because we're gonna be rendering multiple particles. We want to have this M separate, but really a good optimization would be, you're not gonna get a huge amount of improvement performance wise, but it is there for the taking. If you combine these two together, then you only have to multiply by one afterwards, right? And that's very possible. I'm not gonna do it now, but you could definitely do that. We probably even should, really. Okay, so we've basically made a camera class. Let's do something a bit more exciting and let's make a particle class. So I'm gonna to go to my project here. I'm gonna to go to add class. And I will call it, I want particle with a capital P. Let me go lower case, but. Slightly concerning amount of time on that particle. Still spinning. <laughs> and beautiful. What happened? Okay. So it didn't do anything. Now, to be fair, I have made a particle class before, and it might be in the same directory. So it is possible that it encountered a problem from that. But let's try that again. I'm going to try capital P particle, and we'll see if that fixes it. Okay, we're two for two now. All right, I hate to do this and I will definitely update this after the fact. So I'm gonna try particle class. I hate doing this, I hate adding class at the end of a file it's a class you really don't need that but that's what i'm going to do to get us past that i believe that's because in order to get ready for this i've made a particle class and it might still be in the same location so it's crashing and burning from that but i guess on that note people watching at home do you guys still use visual studio have people have any of you switched over to vs code uh, i feel like visual studio has gotten a lot slower and is kind of VS Code is looking better and better every day, but I keep using Visual Studio for C++. Maybe someday it'll get so bad I'll jump ship, but... Okay, let's make a class. So I'm going to call it Particle Class. All right. So I'm going to get rid of these. I'll just leave it to the implicit. So what are we gonna have in this class? This is gonna represent an individual particle. And so this is gonna kind of grow over time, but for the time being, what we're gonna put in here is we're gonna put in uh, some info for creating that matrix transformation. So we'll have a position, we'll have a rotation, we'll have a scale. I'm also gonna put a color in 
and I'm going to put a mat four in to hold on to that matrix. Um, in order to be a good example of proper code, I am going to make them all private and I will add accessors and mutators. Up to you if you'd like to do that. Obviously it does add some effort, but it is a good practice. Okay, so we'll add in that GLM. Okay, and using namespace. Okay, so I like to have that M underscore prefix for a member. Once again, you really don't have to if you don't want to. So we're gonna have a position. We're gonna have an orientation and we're going to have a scale. Okay, as well, I'm gonna have a vector four for the color. Here's the awkward part. I'm Canadian, so I put that U in color. I'm sorry to anyone I've just upset with that choice, but I can't not do it. So here we are. Apologies. A lot of matrix, which we can hold on to. And the one thing I'm going to do is a bit of an optimization. I don't know how much this will actually be used. Maybe we'll end up pulling this out later, but I'm going to put in a dirty flag. So we'll only update this matrix if one of these three values has changed. Okay, so let's write out some code here. So because I'm doing this with nice public and private visibility, we're gonna have some getters and setters. So we'll have a vector four, get color. Once again, sorry for the U. Uh, and once again, because I am really writing with proper form, uh, we're setting this function as const, right? So I've added this const in because this isn't gonna change any values within this class. All right, and we'll have a setter as well, set color, which we'll take in a vector four, const vector four by reference. So we wanna do this by reference because a vector four is four floats which means it's going to be more expensive than passing by, or it's gonna be more expensive to pass by value. So it's always better to use our reference. And because we're doing our const here, we don't need to worry about any funkiness. Okay, now let's repeat that a bunch of times. Okay. So for our getters, we need to get position, And for our setters, I think I'm going to write out oops. the setters I'm going to do in the CPP because it is a little more than one line. You really don't have to. It's up to you if you'd like to or not. Three position. Sorry, I feel like this is also, I'll do the control period, create definition. Why did it put that there? Oh my gosh. I've been writing this all in. <laughs> Oopsies. There we go. Sorry about that. Goof on my part. Much better. Okay, so we are going to set orientation. Get it. Set orientation. scale and set scale. OK, 
Okay. So those will go ahead and write once we're done here. The other thing we should do, a couple more things. Oops. Some of the functions we're going to want, we're definitely going to want access to that matrix. So let's have a get m const, which will just return. Okay, I'm going to add an update here. Once again, um, I know right now that feels a little bit like overkill, right? This class is pretty lean as it is, but as our particle begins to grow, we're going to want it. We're going to add parameter list constructor, and we're going to add one with parameters. So a vector three. Oh, I'm just going to use shorthand here just to try and save some time. The default, I'm just going to leave as is. Okay. Now we're making progress. All right. So for our parameterized constructor, we're just going to go through and set all of these so positions, pose, orientation is equal to orient, scale is equal. And color is equal to CLR. Okay. Now for all of these, um, once again, I know that these are things that you're going to look at and say, well, this feels a little bit like overkill, but I'm just trying to think if this is going to be high performance code that we're really trying to be efficient about. We're going to do our checks here. So if this is a different position than what we already have, we'll store it and then we'll say transform change is equal to true. Okay. Do the same with these guys, just need to rename. And orientation. Okay, that looks good. I think I did the set color in the other one. I can skip that. Okay, and then in here, this is where the magic happens, right? This is where we assemble our matrix. So we're gonna say if a transform has changed, oh, that's actually something I should do in here too. Right? I'll have to say transform change is equal to true, right? Because we're just setting all those. So we'll say m is equal to translate. I'm going to use the Euler angle function. Depending on kind of your experience with OpenGL and what you like to use, this might seem crazy to you. Um, I typically like this just because I find it makes more sense. Uh, really, we could probably use a quaternion, right, to represent this, but um, I'm just gonna use this function to convert that rotation properly. I think we'll have to add some includes. So we'll add ctc matrix transform b and to get that Euler or if you're like me and you like to say Euler it's an experimental now, because I'm including the experimental one here, uh, the way GLM works, it doesn't like it if you use that without enabling experimental. So we'll cut that off at the pass right now and we'll solve that. Okay. So now we have some rotation and finally we will do scale four. Okay, 
So that looks great. We've got our particle class filled out nicely and it's looking good. We can do a build. Nothing's really going to change. I just want to see if we get any errors. Uh, builds everything. So let's try to play. Cool. That's good. Now we're going to start to try this out. So back in main, instead of having M here, get rid of that. So instead of that guy, I'm going to make a vector of particles. So dynamic array. So once again, this is kind of where we're blurring the lines a little bit. Um, you probably want to have kind of a particle manager class or something along those lines rather than this. And I need to include. But for the time being, that's okay. I think it is. Oh. It's not going to like it because I added it to the project. So I have to do there we go. It just has this out folder where it puts new uh, files. Okay. That looks good. I'm going to make another function to initialize some particles. And we can call this down here. And for the time being, let's just try placing one particle. So we'll say particles dot place back. So using this in place back setup, uh, this is something that the V Assist uh, addition for me kind of changed things up. I would usually use pushback and I would call the constructor. Using in place back here, you can just directly send the parameters you want to have sent into this constructor and it'll remove one call. So let's try move over that. For the rotation, I'm just gonna set it to zero because I'm, <laughs> I'm worried if we don't face the camera, we're not gonna see anything. Uh, that's something as time goes on, we can talk about. There is definitely, um, with particles, you may not actually want to have full uh, three axes of rotation. And for the color, let's just do something random. Let's set the alpha to one. Okay. So our particle is good. We now need to update our shader to use that color that we're passing. And we also need to update our code because before we're using that matrix, which doesn't exist anymore, right? So for the color, pretty straightforward. Right now we're doing this quite inefficiently. We are just gonna, for each particle, do a separate render call. That's gonna be one of the things we do next is optimizing this. Don't worry. I have to call this red color, otherwise I would add a U. It's bad otherwise. <laughs> okay, so we have that color now added in. And so we'll update our code in here a little bit. So no matter what we want to use, we want to set our view and projection, right? This M matrix is now going to be dependent on the particle we are currently rendering, right? So VAO will move up. Okay. I don't even know if we need that call. And I'm going to do a for loop. Um, I've started to switch over to using these auto for loops. Once again, vAssist is kind of pushing that for me. Okay, so for each particle, we are going to set M as particle dot get M. Okay, so that'll set uh, that matrix. 
And now, you know what? This could have. Oh yeah, yeah. So then here we'll do our. Um, oh, uniform. Sorry about that. This is going to be our color. And for this one, we are going to get, I think this one actually is going to want each individual element, which is a bit of a pain in the butt, but that's okay. So if I wanted to, I could do particle uh, get color zero, then do one, then do two, then do three. It's a little bit ugly, so maybe I'll just But we could totally do that as well. Just avoid doing all those superfluous calls. And three. All right. That looks good. Unless I am sorely mistaken, we need this in here. I think we're good. Let's give this a run. Color doesn't look too different. Let's make sure that's being passed through. Let's turn up the red. There we go. Nice, so we can tell it's working. Okay, so that looks good. Something else we should do in here, just to kind of be careful, is we should start calling the update functions here, right? I didn't even think about that. I don't think we actually moved the way we were supposed to. And we should also add some blending when we do our color or when we do our render, right? Because we now have an alpha value on that color, so it's possible. So in update, I'm gonna use this same bit of code and I'll say particle dot update. Try that, I should now see it, it's moved over. There we go, cool. And then the blending I was talking about. Do enable, GL blend, GL blend, oops. Function GL source alpha GL one minus alpha. So that's because now that we're setting this color, right? I have it set to being fully opaque right now, but if I set this to 0.5. It should now blend a little bit. There's a lot that goes into particles that I'm kind of skipping over that we're gonna talk about later, additive blending or sorting your particles. So you get that proper uh, transparency. But for the time being, we just wanna have this initial pass. So this looks great thus far. The only other thing I wanna do for this first video is I wanna add a helper function class. And I wanna add the ability to randomly generate some values. So what we'll do is instead of just hard coding one particle, we'll randomly generate a bunch of them instead. Okay, so I'm gonna make a new class. Um, I guess I can't call it helper. I'll have to call it helper class. Okay, and so what we want here is Really, this is gonna be a catch-all as we work on this project. As we have stuff come up, we wanna have a function that'll help us out. We'll be able to use our helper class. We're gonna keep almost, I think everything really, to static functions in here. Uh, so we never actually create an object of this. It's just to run some functions for us. So maybe if you wanna convert radians, it'd be good in here or something like that. Okay. So public, now there's two functions I'm gonna write first and they're gonna use templates. 
So if you're not comfortable with templates in C++, um, maybe you've used them in different languages, maybe you haven't. The idea is uh, normally we would set a type, right? Gen Sorry, I'm talking and distracting myself. So normally we would set a type and say, this is going to take a int in for the min, and it's going to take a int in for the max, and it's going to return an int. I'm gonna use templates here to write this with generic code so that we can generate different types of numbers or different types of data, I should say, rather. So with this, we'll be able to take in floats, doubles, ints, shorts, whatever you want. Uh, it ends up being a little bit ugly, unfortunately, with C++, but this is what I have in my game, actually. I use this quite a lot, and I find it super handy. It's a pain in the butt to write the first time, but then you can benefit from it over and over again. So I'm gonna support two ways to generate random numbers. So we can take in a minimum value and a maximum value. So that'll generate a random number between those two, or we can take in a vector two range to do it. Now with C++ being kind of weird with its syntax sometimes, I'm actually going to fill these out in here. Okay, so we're gonna do some checks first. So if min is equal to zero and max is equal to zero, or if min is equal to zero and max is equal to one, I'll just return zero. I'm not sure if I had a specific situation come up in my game that I wanted to handle that one in particular. That seems a little random, but just we'll do that. Um, something to kind of keep in mind as you're writing this. So this zero is going to inherently be represented with a specific data type, right? Because we're using this T class, there's gonna be an implicit conversion. It should be okay because we're just saying zero, but it is something to be mindful of. It's a little bit sketchy. So we're gonna cast whatever we get as T. We're gonna say max minus min times float brand oops. put the float in the bracket divided by brand max plus one and add min. So what are we doing here? Rand is a function that'll return a random number to us. It'll be a random number between zero and rand max. So by dividing by it, that means we're gonna get out a random number between zero and one. We'll multiply it by the delta between these two and then add the min value so that we'll be able to get a number in this range. I'm gonna duplicate this, except use that range. Okay. And it's mostly the same, but a little bit different. You could probably just get rid of that one. To be honest with you. And then for all these values, range y is going to be our max and our min is going to be range x. Okay. So we got those in place. That's good. I, I know that was a pain in the butt. I'm sorry. It'll be worthwhile because now we'll be able to use these whenever we want. We can generate random numbers super easily. And the last thing I want to do in this helper class is I want to make it so we can generate uh, vectors with it, or I should say GLM vectors with it. So generate random two vector. Could probably have a better name than that. But. And Okay. So 
So why am I doing this again? When we make all of our particles at the start, I'm gonna use these functions to just randomly assign values. And all the functions are gonna do is just call that same generate random number fu function, but three times for a vector three or four times for a vector four. Okay. So to fill these out, um, this you might think is a little weird uh, using this view assist. I've started adopting this. You'll see it says unnecessary explicit call. So you can actually just use these brace brackets. So in the past, normally I would say vector two and then type this in. Uh, these brace brackets kind of cover that. So I'm going to generate a random number, say it'll be a float. And for this format, if you give it this range value, it'll be between zero and that range. Do that twice. Okay. That one looks good. For this one, do the same thing, but just give it the range. I'm trying to motor here. I know this is a, a bit repetitive. Okay, this guy. All right, so now we can make use of those. So back in our main function here, oh, that's not it, in that CPP, when we initialize our particles here, we're gonna make this a lot more fun. Um, I guess before I write this, something I'll point out as well, um, using that rand function, with what we have right now, we are gonna get the same result every single time. That's because we aren't feeding Rand a different seed every time. At some point, maybe our next video, we'll update this so we set the seed to the current time so we always get something different, or for the most part, with very good probability, we'll get something different. But that'll be why if you run this multiple times and you think to yourself, hey, shouldn't this be different every time? That's why. So let's try 30 particles. I know it's uh, not exactly going to be pushing our computers too hard, but and we're just gonna call those functions. So I'll have to include it. Okay. Helper class generate random vector three. So for the position, I'm gonna say vector two minus five, five. Okay, so that'll position the particles between minus five and five on the X, the Y, and the Z axis. For the rotation, we all use some GLM, I'll do pi minus pi and pi. Oops. For the scale, Let's do like 0.3 and 3. If you do 0 there, you'll just get nothing. The scale will be too like 0. It'll eliminate it, right? And then finally, for our color, I think I have a mistake in there, but that's okay. We're going to do between 0 and 1. Get these to be. Over there. Nice. All right, let's give it a shot. And see if it's worked the way we think it should. Look at that. Okay, so I know <laughs> right now what we have is not beautiful flame particles or explosions or blood, 
but this is a really good jumping off point. This is gonna give us the basis of being able to build our particle system. We now have a basic particle class. We have some decent rendering code. It's obviously very unoptimized, but we have some rendering code and we have some logic around setting it all up. That's gonna do it for today's video. We're gonna keep this going in an ongoing series, so be patient. I'll post all of the code I've written today on GitHub and keep looking forward to the next one. We're gonna use this as the starting point in the next one and we'll keep building this up. We'll improve the performance a bit. Eventually we're gonna to switch to textures. We're gonna start having our particles move around and we're gonna start optimizing things. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.